Phillips, the man who was Pakistan's first foreign minister, reads his essay for this I Believe. You're listening to Bob Edwards Weekend. Support for this I Believe on Bob Edwards Weekend comes from Kellogg, who believes a bowl of cornflakes and radio programming like this I Believe have the makings of a wholesome morning. Kellogg's cornflakes, fat-free and cholesterol-free since 1906. I believe in the power of love. I believe that a generation of young people... I believe it deeply and sincerely. I believe in the importance of passing this knowledge. I on. believe that everyone wants to love... All and these believe. add up to my belief in the dignity of the individual. I believe in people. This I believe. For many people in the Western world, Islam is a religion that still evokes strong reactions of fear and prejudice. Many countries in Europe are considering banning burqas and plans to build an Islamic community center near Ground Zero have angered many Americans. It seems that in the years since the September 11th attacks, non-Muslims have only grown more suspicious of Islam and those who follow its teachings. This week in our series, This I Believe, we'll hear from someone who would be very disappointed about that state of affairs. Mohammed Khan was Pakistan's first foreign minister an active participant in several international organizations and was a self-appointed spokesman to the Christian world on all things Islam. Producer Dan Gediman says he considers Khan as important to Pakistan's independence as Thomas Jefferson was to the emergence of the United States. He was sort of the, the brains behind the operation. He was the guy who was testifying before various uh, bodies in colonial India making the case first for the independence of India and then for the partition of India into both Muslim and, uh, and Hindu uh, dominated countries, Pakistan and, and, and India, and also was a great proponent of the idea of Pakistan as a Muslim state. At this moment in time, that sort of has a bad ring to it. You know, we think about Iran, we think about uh, the Taliban, we think about other places where a theocracy has been installed. But in the early days of Pakistan, the, the people like uh, Sir Khan, who were coming up with the whole notion of, a, of an independent Pakistan, were really thinking about establishing a republic that was based on sort of the purest form of Islam in terms of how to treat your citizens, how to treat uh, minorities within the country, how to treat other countries, how to deal with conflict, etc. He just had this, this larger-than-life role in the birth of Pakistan, and then went from, from this sort of nation-building role, if you will, to uh, becoming its main diplomat. Um, he represents Muslim Indians earlier than that at the, in the League of Nations. Um, he ends up at the birth of the UN representing Pakistan at the U UN. And then he moves from being a diplomat to a jurist. I should mention that he, he was a lawyer, and a very skilled lawyer. Uh, and he becomes a judge at The Hague, where post he held until 1961. And then fast forward until the, to 1970, he becomes the president of The Hague. And, um, and also in the, in the middle was the uh, president of the UN General Assembly. He knew that Islam had acquired a reputation for intolerance around the world, and he found that very upsetting, uh, being a devout Muslim. He said that Islam has, from the beginning, proclaimed and inculcated the widest tolerance. He considered himself, above all, uh, more than a diplomat, more than a lawyer, more than a jurist, a, a, a good Muslim. And in particular, uh, he subscribed to a sect of, of Islam known as the Ahmadiyya sect, and there's been historical persecution of this sect for having a different set of beliefs. It's, it's sort of like, in a way, Mormonism in the United States with mainstream Christianity, the notion that, no, Jesus was not the last word on Christianity. And so I think that's a pretty good analogy to this Ahmadiyya sect, that um, they believed that their founder had some additional illumination about um, how Islam should be practiced. So at any rate, it, it was a major part of his career to try to educate the West about Islam and to do it properly because he was concerned that even back then in the 1940s and 50s that uh, the West was getting sort of a bastardized impression of what Islam was. Well, let's hear the essay of Muhammad Khan. Islam means peace through submission to the will of God. I am a Muslim 
that is one who believes in Islam and hence submits himself to the will of God. I believe that all things proceed from God and depend upon him for support and sustenance. I believe he needs no support. He neither begets nor is begotten. He has no partner and no equal. I believe in God's angels as the agency through which he communicates with his creatures. And I believe that from time to time revelations from God have been delivered for the guidance of mankind. I believe in all of God's prophets, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Buddha, Krishna, and that the holy prophet Muhammad, on whom be peace, was the last law-bearing prophet. I believe Jesus did not die upon the cross, but was taken down from the cross and revived. Thereafter, he journeyed eastward, preaching to the scattered tribes of Israel, and died in Kashmir, where his tomb is still preserved in Srinagar. I believe that subordinate prophets will continue to arise in Islam when mankind strays from the path of righteousness and needs divine revelation. It is necessary that as the pattern of human life develops, mankind should have a living example set before them of a life utterly pure and devoted to the service of God and man. I believe in the resurrection of the soul and the life after death. I believe that the object of man's existence is to seek union with God through the cultivation of divine attributes in himself. I believe that man has been endowed for this purpose with appropriate capacities and faculties. The right and proper use of these capacities and faculties promotes beneficent development and leads to the state known as salvation. I believe in the brotherhood and equality of man. I recognize no division or privilege based on race, color, family or wealth. The only badge of honor and nobility that I recognize is the purity and righteousness of a man's life. My life is guided by this faith and by the following rules. Whenever I feel lonely, weary, or discouraged, I must turn towards God for companionship, comfort, and help. He is ever near and will not fail me. I must make my heart his shrine and temple, and let him ever dwell in it in sweet guardianship and companionship. I must stand up for truth, righteousness, fair dealing, and justice. I must stand with God though I may have to stand against the whole world. And I believe the love and fear of God are the sum of all wisdom. Muhammad Khan, for this, I believe, we've heard um, several essays from devout Christians. This is the first from a devout Muslim, and I was um, astonished at this one little paragraph here that, that seems almost gratuitous. He says, I believe Jesus did not die upon the cross, but was taken down from the cross and revived. Um, this is a central belief to the Ahmadiyya sect of Islam. There is a tomb in Kashmir of this prophet, who they call Yuz Asaf, who his sect believes is Jesus although mainstream Muslims believe that he is simply a secondary prophet from the first century of what we would call the first century AD. But they believe that this was the historical Jesus who actually did not die but was revived and was whisked out of occupied, you know, Roman territory and brought to India where he lived out uh, his life into old age and what became a great sage, a great prophet and then died and was buried and is entombed to this day in Kashmir. Well, I wonder how this went over with the listeners of CBS Radio in the 1950s. Well, you know, the great thing about uh, Sir Khan and his, his sect is that they uh, single-handedly are sort of apostates of uh, several major religions. Mohammed Khan, the uh, first foreign minister of Pakistan. Who do we have next week?